welcome to to the point in today's session let's continue our discussion on emergence of gandhi gandhi in india gandhi returned to india in january 1915 and his efforts in south africa it was very well known not only among the educated but also among all the masses in india gandhi decided to tour the entire country for the next one year and to see for himself the condition of the people so gandhi he also decided not to take any position on any political matter for at least one year and as for the political current which was prevalent at that time in india gandhi was convinced about the limitation of moderate politics and was also it was not in favor of home rule agitation which was becoming popular at that time and gandhi thought that it was not the best time to agitate for home rule because that was a time when britain was in middle of the war so gandhi was convinced that only the technique capable of meeting the nationalist aims was non violent satyagraha gandhi also said that he would join no political organization unless it also accepted the non violent satyagraha and during 1917 and 1918 gandhi was involved in three struggles those struggles are champaran ahmedabad and kedha satyagraha so he involved in this three satyagrahas before he launched rovalat satyagraha now let's discuss about all the three struggles of gandhi ji champaran satyagraha so this satyagraha took place in 19 and this was the first civil disobedience gandhi was requested by rajkumar shukla who was a local man to look into the problems of the farmers in the context of indigo planters of champaran in bihar the european planters they had been forcing the peasants to grow indigo on 3 by 20 part of the total land which is called as tinkatia system But towards the end of 19th century german synthetic dyes it replaced indigo and the european planters demanded high rents and illegal dues from the peasants in order to maximize their profits and before the peasant they could shift to other crops and apart from this the peasants were forced to sell the produce at the prices that was fixed by the europeans and at this time gandhi ji joined rajendra prasad malarul haq mahadeo desai narhari parek jb kripa palni and he reached to champaran to look into this matter and the authorities ordered gandhi to leave the area at once gandhi he defied the order and he preferred to face the punishment and this passive resistance or civil disobedience for an unjust order it was a novel method at that time and finally the all the authorities retreated and permitted gandhi to make an enquiry and now the government appointed a committee to look into the matter and nominated gandhi as a member and gandhi was able to convince the authorities that tinkatia system it should be abolished and that the peasants they should be compensated for illegal dues that was extracted from them and as as a compromise with the planters gandhi ji agreed that only 25% of money taken should be compensated and after this within a decade the planters they left the area and gandhi had won the first battle of civil disobedience in india along with gandhi other popular leaders who were associated with champaran satyagraha were brachkishor prasad anugrah narayan singha ram navami prasad and 
Shambhusharan Verma. The next struggle of Gandhiji was Ahmedabad Mill Strike in 1918. So this was the first hunger strike. In March 1918, Gandhiji intervened in a dispute between cotton mill owners of Ahmedabad and the workers over the issue of discontinuation of plague bonus. The mill owners they wanted to withdraw the bonus. The workers were demanding a rise of 50% in their wages so that they could manage in times of wartime inflation. Wartime inflation means at that time the prices of food grains, cloths and other necessities it was doubled. So this wartime inflation and all it caused by the Britain's involvement in World War I. So the mill owners they were ready to give only 20% wage hikes and the workers they went on for the strike. The relation between the workers and the mill owners it was getting worse day by day and with the striking workers it was being arbitrarily dismissed and the mill owners decided to bring in weavers from other states like Bombay, Calcutta and so on. The workers of the mill they turned into Anusuya Sarabai for help in fighting for justice and Anusuya Sarabai was a social worker who was also the sister of Ambalal Sarabai, one of the mill owners and the president of Ahmedabad Mill Owners Association. So this association used to develop the textile industry in Ahmedabad. So the people, the workers approached Anusya Sarabai to help in fighting for justice and Anusya Behan went to Gandhi who was respected by the mill owners and also by the workers and she asked Gandhi to intervene and help resolve the impasse between the workers and also the employers. Even though Gandhi was a friend of Ambalal, he took up the workers cause. Anusya too supported the workers and was one of the chief lieutenants of Gandhi and it was Anusya Behan who went on later to form the Ahmedabad Textile Labour Association in 1920 and Gandhi he asked the workers to go on a strike and demand a 35% increase in wages instead of 50% and Gandhi advised the workers to remain non-violent on the strike and when negotiations with the mill owners it did not get any progress Gandhi himself undertook a fast unto death to strengthen the workers resolve but the fast also had an effect of putting pressure on the mill owners who finally agreed to submit the issue to a tribunal and the strike was withdrawn and in the end the tribunal awarded the workers with a 35% wage hike and this was the first time that Gandhi went on for hunger strike and that was in Ahmedabad mill strike for the purpose of increment of labor wages. Labors demanded for 50% but company agreed to provide only 20% hike whereas Gandhiji he brought it up to 35% of wage hike to the workers through his hunger strike Keda Satyagraha 1918 and this was the first non-cooperation there was a drought around 1918 and the crops failed in Keda district of Gujarat and according to revenue code if the yield was less than one fourth of the normal produce the farmers were entitled to remission. The Gujarat Sabha consisting of the peasants they submitted petitions to highest governing authorities of the province requesting that the revenue assessment for the year 1919 be suspended. The government it remained adamant and said that the property of the farmers would be seized if the taxes were not paid and Gandhi asked the farmers not to pay the taxes. Gandhi 
he was however the mainly the spiritual head of the struggle and it was sardar vallabhai patel and the group of other devoted gandhians namely narahari parik mohanlal pandya and ravi shankar they went around the villages they organized the villages and told them what to do and they gave necessary political leadership and patel along with his colleagues he organized a tax revolt which the different ethnic and caste communities of kedha supported and the revolt it was remarkable in the discipline and unity that was maintained even after that the government seized the farmers property personal properties if they did not pay the tax and the vast majority of kedha's farmer did not desert sardar patel gujaratis in other parts they sympathized with the cause of the revolt they helped by sheltering the relatives and the property of protesting peasants and those indians who sought to buy the confiscated land they were socially ostracized that means they were completely excluded from the society or a group especially from the villages the government sought to bring about an agreement with the farmers and it agreed to suspend the tax for the year in question and for the next to reduce the increase in rate and return all the confiscated property the struggle at keda it brought a new awakening among the peasantries and they became aware that they would not be free of injustice and exploitation unless and until their country achieved complete independence so what were the benefits from champaran ahmadabad mill strike and keda satyagraha gandhi demonstrated to the people the efficacy of his technique of satyagraha gandhi found his feet among the masses and came to have a surer understanding of the strengths and weakness of the masses he acquired respect and commitment of many and especially he gained the commitment from youths the rovalat act so just 6 months before the montford reforms were to be put into effect two bills were introduced in the imperial legislative council one of them it was dropped but the other it was an extension to the defense of india regulation act 1915 and it was passed in march 1919 and it was what was officially called as anarchial and revolutionary crimes act and this act it was popularly known as rovalat act so rovalat act it was based on the recommendation made in the previous year to the imperial legislative council by the rovalat commission and it was headed by british judge sir sydney rolat to to investigate the seditious conspiracy of the indian people so this committee it had recommended that activities should be deported or imprisoned without a trial for up to 2 years and that even the position of seditious newspaper would be adequate evidence of guilt and all the elected indian members of the imperial legislative council voted against the bill but the indian people the indian members were in a minority and easily they were overruled by the official nominees and all the elected indian members it included mohammad ali jinnah madan mohan malaviya and malar ul haq and they all resigned in this protest the rawlat act it allowed political activist to be tried without juries or even imprisoned without trial it allowed arrest of indians without warrant on one or a mere suspicion of treason and such suspects it could be tried in secrecy without recourse to legal help a special cell consisting of three high court judges was to try such suspects and there was no court of appeal above that panel and this panel could even accept evidence and not acceptable under the indian evidences act the law of 
habeas corpus, the basis of civil liberty, it was sought to be suspended. And the object of government, it was to replace the repressive provisions of the wartime defense of India Act 1915. So, by a permanent law. And so, the wartime restriction on freedom of speech and assembly, it were reimposed in India. And there was a strict control over the press and the government was armed with a variety of powers to deal with anything and the authorities choose to consider a terrorism or revolutionary tactics. And in that time, many protests, it rose up in Punjab. So this was a highly concentrated area of Indian veterans from the war that lived here. Satyagraha against the Rovalat Act. This was the first mass strike. So, just when the Indians expected a huge advance towards self-rule, as a reward for their contribution to the war, they were given a Montford reforms with its very limited scope and shockingly a Rovalite Act also. And the Indians felt betrayed by these two acts. And moreover, Gandhi, who had been at the forefront in offering cooperation in British war effort and who had even offered to encourage recruitment of Indians into the British Indian forces, he called the Rowlatt Act as the Black Act and argued that not everyone should get punishment in response to isolated political crimes. And Gandhiji, he called for mass protest at all India level. But soon, having seen the constitutional protest meet with ruthless repression, Gandhi, he organized a Satyagraha Sabha and he roped in younger members of Home Rule Leagues and the Pan-Islamist. The forms of protest it finally chosen, it included observance of nationwide Hardal. Hartal means strike and this strike it was accompanied by fasting and prayer and also civil disobedience against specific laws and courting arrest and imprisonment. And by that time there was a radical change in the situation and those radical changes were the masses they had found a direction now and now they could act instead of just giving verbal expression to their grievances and from now onwards peasants, artisans and the urban poor were to play an increasingly important part in the struggle and orientation of the national movement it turned to the masses permanently and Gandhiji said that the salvation would come when masses were awakened and became active in politics and Satyagraha it was launched on April 6, 1919, but before it could be launched, there were a large-scale violent anti-British demonstrations in Calcutta, Bombay, Delhi and in many other places. And the large-scale violent, it was especially in Punjab and the situation became very explosive due to wartime repression and forcible recruitments and ravages of diseases that the army had called in and in April 1919 it saw the biggest and most violent anti-British upsurge since 1857 and the lieutenant governor of Punjab Sir Michael O. Dever is said to have used aircraft strapping against the violent protesters. Jalian Walabag Massacre so, This took place on April 13th, 1919. Amrister was the worst affected by this violence. In the beginning, there was no violence by the protesters. And Indians, they shut down their shops and normal trade and the emptied streets. It showed that Indians displeased at British betrayal. And on April 9th, Two nationalist leaders, Saifuddin Kichlev and Dr. Satyapal, were arrested by the British officials without any provocations. 
except they had addressed protest meetings and taken to some unknown destinations. This caused resentment among the Indian protesters who came out in thousands on April 10th to show their solidarity and unitedness with their leaders. And soon this protest, it turned violent because the police restored to firing in which some of the protesters were killed. Tensions ran very high. In this riot followed, five Englishmen are reported to have been killed and also an English woman missionary going on a bicycle, she was beaten up and troops were sent immediately to quell the disturbances. Brigadier General Dyer was a senior British officer with the responsibility to impose martial law and restore order. By then, the city had written to come and the protests that were being held were peaceful. And Dyer issued a proclamation on April 13th, which was also the Baisakhi Day forbidding people from leaving the city without a pass and from organizing demonstration or processions or assemblies in groups of more than three. And on Baisakhi day, a large crowd of people, mostly from neighboring villages, they were unaware about these prohibitory orders. Like they were not knowing that more than three people should not be in a group. So, without knowing all about all these orders, they gathered in the Jalian Bala Bagh. This was a popular place for public events to celebrate the Baisakhi festival. And local leaders, they had also called for protest meeting at the venue. And it is not clear how many in 20,000 odd people collected there were political protesters. But the majority those who were collected for the festival was present in the Jalian Bala Bagh Park. The meeting had gone peacefully and two resolutions, one calling for the repeal of Rowlatt Act and other condemning the firing on April 10, it has passed. And it was then the Brigadier General Dyer, he arrived on the scene with his men. These troops, they surrounded the gathering under orders from General Dyer and they blocked all the exit point and opened fire on the crowd. No warning was issued at the beginning and no instruction was given to disperse initially. All of a sudden, these troops, they started firing on the men, women as well as children. And according to the officials, British Indian sources says that 379 people were dead and approximately 1100 people were wounded. And the Indian National Congress on the other hand it estimated that more than 1500 people were injured and approximately 1000 people were killed. The incident it was followed by uncivilized brutalities on the inhabitants of Amritsar. Martial law was proclaimed in Punjab and public floggings and other humiliations were perpetrated. And in one instance, Indians were forced to travel on their bellies down the road on which the English missionary had been assaulted. The entire nation was stunned for this incident and Rabindranath Tagore, he renounced his knighthood and protest. Gandhi, he gave up the title of Kaiser E. Hind, bestowed by the British for his work during the Boer War. And Gandhi was overwhelmed by this atmosphere of total violence and he withdrew the movement on April 18, 1919. Seen in an objective way, Dyer ensured the beginning of the end of British Raj. What happened in Amritsar? It has made Gandhi declare that cooperation with a satanic regime, it was impossible now. 
and gandhi realized that the cause of indian independence from british rule it was morally righteous and the way to non cooperation movement was ready and according to the historian apj tyler the jallian wala bag massacre it was the decisive moment when indians were alienated from british rule the events of 1919 it were to shape punjab's politics of resistance and bhagat singh was just 11 at that time of jallian wala bag massacre and for bhagat singh's bharat naujan sabha the massacre was to act as a symbol that would help overcome the apathy that came in the wake of the end of non cooperation movement uddam singh who bore the name ram mohammad singh azad later assassinated michael o jiver the lieutenant governor who presided over brutal british suppression of 1919 protest in punjab and uddam singh was hanged in 1940 for this deed and his ashes were returned to india in 1974 the hunter committee of enquiry the massacre at jallian wala bag it shocked indians and many britishers also the secretary of state for india edwin montag he ordered that a committee of enquiry should be formed to investigate into the matter so on october 14 1919 the government of india it announced the formation of the disorders inquiry committee and this committee it was known as hunter committee or hunter commission why because the chairman of the commission was lord william hunter he was a former solicitor general of for scotland and a senator of the college of justice in scotland the purpose of the commission it was to investigate the recent disturbances in bombay delhi and punjab over their causes and their measures taken to cope with them and there were three indians among the members they were sir chimanlal harilal setalwan who was a vice chancellor of bombay university and an advocate of bombay high court and the other one was pandit jagat narayan he was a lawyer and the member of legislative council of united province and sardar shahib zad sultan ahmed khan so after the meeting in delhi on october 29th the committee took statements from the witnesses called in from delhi ahmedabad bombay and lahore and in november the committee it reached lahore and examined the principal witness to events in amritsar and dyer was also called before the committee he was confident that he had done only his duty and dyer stated that his intentions had been to strike terror throughout the punjab and in doing so he would reduce the moral stature of rebels and dyer is reported to have explained his sense of honor by saying i think it is quite possible that i could have dispersed the crowd without firing but they would have come back again and laughed and would have made what i considered a fool of myself this was a statement given by the dyer and he also said that he did not make any effort to tend to the wounded after the shooting as he did not consider it was his job even though dyer statement caused racial tensions among the members of the committee the final report was released in march 1920 and that report it condemned dyer's action the report stated that the lack of notice to disperse of the bag in the beginning it was an error on the length of firing it showed a grave error and dyer's motive of producing a sufficient moral effect it was to be condemned and dyer had overstepped the bounds of his authority and there had been no conspiracy to overthrow british rule in the punjab the minority report of indian members it further added that proclamation banning public meetings 
it were insufficiently publicized and they were innocent people in the crowd and there had been any violence in the bar beforehand and dyer should have either ordered his troops to help the wounded or instructed the civil authorities to do so and dyer's action it had been inhuman and un-british and it had greatly injured the image of british rule in india so this was the statement of hunter committee committee but the hunter committee did not impose any pen, penal or disciplinary action towards dyer because dyer's action it were condoned by various superiors so before the hunter committee began its proceedings the government has also passed an indemnity act for the protection of its officers the white washing bill as the indemnity act it was called and it was severely criticized by motilal nehru and many other leaders in england it fell to secretary of the state for war at that time and winston churchill he has to review the report of the commission in the house of commons churchill he condemned what had happened at amritsar the cabinet it agreed with churchill that dyer was a dangerous man and could not be allowed to continue in his post the decision that dyer should be dismissed it was conveyed to army council and in the end dyer was found guilty of his mistaken notion of duty and relieved of his command in march 1920 and he was recalled to england back apart legal action was taken against dyer and he drew half pay and he also received army pensions at the end dyer he was not universally condemned in the house of lords most of the peers they favored dyer and the houses passed a motion in his support also and the morning post is reported to have raised a sum of 26 pounds for dyer a famous contributor to the fund was rudyard kipling and this was strongly enough the clergy of golden temple which was led by arur singh it honored dyer by declaring him a sikh and the honoring of dyer by the priest of shri darbar sahib of demand for reforming the management of sikh shrines already being voiced by the society like like kalsa diwan mahaja and so on so this resulted in the launch of what came to be known as gurudwara reform movement the indian congress appointed its own non official committee that included motilal nehru c r das abbas tyab ji m r jaikar and gandhi and the congress put forward its own view and this way it criticized dyer's act as inhuman and also said that there was no justification in the introduction of the martial law in punjab so in the next session let's discuss about non cooperation movement and khilafat andolan thank you